Hello, I'm David and I live in Bosnia and Herzegovina. There's no tea today. I'm sat in the garden um, and just having some water. Um, thank you very much indeed for the comments so far. Um, I didn't think I was going to get comments from the get-go, but thank you very much indeed. And one of the comments was from Houston in Texas. I don't know who the person was because he or she didn't leave their name, but said, um, I'm living in Houston in Texas <clears throat> and I have a Bosnian friend or a Bosnian colleague who's talking me into uh, retiring uh, to Bosnia. Now, I'm sat outside today. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that is a jet going into Banja Luka Airport. So we might get some background noise. Bear with me. So retiring to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, my story, I think, is um, easier than most people will have. Um, I'm no expert in immigration law here in Bosnia-Herzegovina. So the caveat is, it's just me giving some advice. Um, and none of it is quotable, really. Or, I mean, every, every situation is going to be different. And trust me on this. But I think basically there are three ways that you can come to live in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And those three ways are um, buy property, set up or invest in a business, or get married to a citizen of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm going to deal with that last because that's what I know the most about. But let's look at starting a business first in BIH. I don't, I'm not involved in business at all, but I do know a friend of mine, Nadia, who was born in Germany, but is Swiss. And she came to the country, fell in love with the country, fell in love with the people, which happens when you come here, believe it or not. And she set up um, a business and invested in it and has employed one or two people. She has locally employed people, which is a must if you're going to get involved with business here. And she is um, living with a temporary residency at the moment. I will talk about temporary residency in a moment. Um, how difficult it is setting up a business. I've got flies everywhere. How difficult it is setting up a business, I have no idea, but I can only assume that it's going to be a bit of a bureaucratic nightmare and it's not an overnight fix. So it's not come here, set up a business and everything will run smoothly. It's not going to happen like that, but it is doable. Nadia has proved it's doable and there are other people that have proved it's doable. As far as buying property is concerned, I do know that you can buy property in Bosnia Herzegovina without it too many problems uh, if there is a reciprocal uh, agreement with the country that you're a citizen of. So uh, Canada, you can buy property here, you can buy property there. So if you're a Bosnian, you can buy a property in, in um, Canada. For the United Kingdom, I know that's the same. And we have a friend as well who outside the village has bought some land. He and his wife are from Austria and they've bought land. Now, um, land does not confer the right of residency. It doesn't. What it does is it opens a pathway to residency. Once you've got uh, property, you can ap apply for a temporary residency permit. I'm going to come on to that, as I said, in a minute. So you can do that. Buying land here, uh, I would recommend, and I haven't done it myself, you do need to make sure that the land is really fit for sale and it hasn't got multiple owners. And the only way that you're going to get through that um, uh, bureaucracy is to find a lawyer here um, that will guide you and help you through that. But it is totally and utterly doable. Um, as I say, my friend um, from uh, Austria has done that. And I think there is a British family in the area that has done it as well. But they have got a way in. And I think it's to do with marriage. Because they're the parents of somebody that has married a local. What I can talk about, though, is 
um, about me and how I'm, what I'm doing here. Um, if you watch one of the previous videos, you'll know that I came and settled here full time in 2011, um, having worked um, abroad for a lot. And the time from 1998, when I came here to 2005 on the first project that I was involved in, I was part of the NATO Stabilization Force. First, as a military person, and I transitioned into being a civilian member of the uh, NATO Stabilization Force, which meant that I had no problems with residency, entry and exit from the country, or whatever. But then from 2005 to 2011, I did work away. And I was coming back um, to visit TAM, to where we were together here, um, and I was able to do that within the 90 days in 180-day rule. I'm going to talk about that. From 2011 until 2019, which is eight years, I was doing consultancy work and I managed to balance my time in the country and out of the country with the 90 in 180 day rule. So once we got married, I then have the right to stay here as a temporary resident because I'm married to Tamara. Right. The temporary residency, you need, as far as I am aware, either to have a business or to um, have bought property or to get married or be in a long term relationship, which I think in Britain is called civil, a civil law um, uh, marriage, common law uh, marriage. So for me, as soon as I got married, I registered for temporary residency and I had to uh, produce a whole list of uh, documents that were required. It is on the list. Uh, it is a, a link that I'll give you in uh, wherever you see this uh, video to the uh, Foreigners Information Office for Bosnia-Herzegovina and you can find out more details there. But basically, I needed to prove that I was um, healthy uh, and you can't just go to any doctor, you're told where to go. I had to prove that I had uh, no civil convictions um, back in the United Kingdom, and I had to get my police record checked there. I had to prove that I had enough money to sustain myself. I had to prove um, that I was able to have health insurance, not state health insurance. And then I needed a sponsor, and the sponsor obviously was Tamara. We're living in a property that is owned by her parents, so they had to say that they were in agreement with me staying here. Um, having done all that, I then got um, residency, temporary residency, for one year. Okay? And I can come and go as I please. I'm now um, halfway through year five, and in November, which is my run out date, if you will, I will apply for year six. During year six, I will apply for permanent residency. Okay. And with that, I think, um, instead of having the normal amount of documentation, which decreases by the way, in those first five years, but in year six, I'm going to have to once again, have uh, a criminal record check from, um, the United Kingdom. I do have uh, healthcare here from the state, uh, because I pay into it. I chose to pay into it. And then after that, I will get, um, permanent residency and permanent residency allows me to stay. I get, um, an identity card, uh, the same as any citizen of Bosnia Herzegovina, but it means I can stay. And I think you know, it goes in 10 permanent residency is 10 year steps. So I'll be able to tell you more about that in uh, November, because as soon as I apply for year six and that's agreed, then I will apply for my permanent residency. I will also have the opportunity to apply after 10 years uh, to apply for citizenship. But I don't want to do that because why would I? Uh, I have all the rights. I will have all the rights as a permanent resident um, apart from voting and taking part in 
public office, and I really, really am not interested in either of those. There may be, I think, um, a language test, but that doesn't apply to me. I can speak the local language adequately, but I don't think it would pass it, you know, at the level for uh, a test because being married, that is a, a serious thing here. And so I do get those rights. Now, I was talking about the 90 to 180 day rule, uh, which I had been able to use while I was working abroad from 2005 to 2011 and doing my consultancy work from 2011 until 2019. It means that within within a 180 day period, right, from start to finish is 180 days in there, I can be in the country for 90 days. And once I finish that 90 days, I must leave. Most people that use that rule structure their lives that they come here for 90 days, then leave the country for 90 days, come back for 90 days, leave for 90 days. And I know people that love this country to bits. They stay here for 90 days and they take the option uh, to either go to Croatia for 90 days, come here for 90 days, go to Montenegro for 90 days, come here or whatever. Or you could do like 10 days here, 10 days out, 10 days here, 10 days out. Do you know what I mean? But you cannot be in this country within a 180 day period. So you have to say, when is my first day? That's my last day. I can be in that period for 90 days. And it is a day, a daily thing. So be aware that, um, that is how things are. And really, really be aware that if you're going to use or plan to use the 90 and 180 days, it's not a case of being here for 90 days and then saying, oh, I think I'll go to Croatia for three days and then come back and it starts again. It does not work like that. And you will fall foul because if the immigration officers see that you've overstayed your welcome, you will be uh, required to leave the country. And depending on your situation, whether you'll be allowed back for three years. So big top tip is do not uh, take chances with immigration. My experience in immigration has been nothing but perfect, to be totally honest with you. My immigration officer is a very, very professional uh, immigration inspector. Um, he has got a sense of humor, but he's straight down the line. And as long as you ab uh, uh, play with the rules, abide by the rules, then there's not going to be a problem. I have heard that people have come um, and fallen foul of the system. Uh, now, whether that's through ignorance, I don't know. If you're told to supply data by a certain date, then then do it. Um, coming back, may maybe you get away with, oh, I forgot. But, you know, if you want to stay here in this beautiful country, um, then go with the system. As I say, if you want to start a business, uh, check out online and you will need some legal um, support. If you're going to buy property, you're going to need, need legal support because you may find that you think you've bought things correctly and then found out that you didn't. So I hope that sort of helps. Retiring Bosnia in, in, in Bosnia, yeah. pluses and minuses. I think yeah. that... On the downside, if you are really attached to your culture of birth, maybe you want to go back. Um, I don't know. For me, and for a lot of other people, um, it's similar to moving to Portugal. And um, I'm going to speak now on behalf of the United States. I'm not an American citizen. I have no idea about life in the United States, although my daughter uh, lives in New Jersey and I have visited her, visited her a few times and I, it's a great place to go for holiday. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people from the States that are disillusioned with the States and are now moving, for example, to Portugal and I think to Spain as well. Maybe Bosnia-Herzegovina will become another one of those countries. I have no idea. But they moved to Portugal because the quality of life is better, although they pay taxes significantly higher than in the United States. They do get state health care and they get other perks as well. Being in Bosnia-Herzegovina for me, as I say, 
because I'm married, I've been able to uh, pay into state health care. The state health care here, as far as I'm concerned, from my experiences, and I've broken my leg, um, I've had uh, a couple of infections, I'm getting older, right? I'm knocking on. And um, I've just had an MRI, which I think should be okay. But all those, have, the, the quality of treatment has been first class. The hospital, the main hospital in the area where I live, based around Banyaluka, is like uber modern. Um, the doctors are first class, most of them speak English. And so I have nothing to say about the healthcare system. I'm going to make an assumption here. You should never make an assumption, right? You should never assume because it makes an ass out of you and me. But um, I think I wouldn't be getting this care back in the UK. But as I say, that's my my opinion. Um, is there corruption in the country? It is. There is. Um, but then again, their form of corruption is just different from the corruption that it's in my country because every country's got corruption. And sometimes I think when British people say to me, oh, they're very corrupt, I, I like to use the phrase that we have in English, which is, this is the pot calling the kettle black. Um, they have their corruption, which you can see. In Britain, we get it served with a bow round the top and in a nice package, but it's the same stuff, right? So there is that, but it doesn't affect you as an everyday citizen. Well, it hasn't affected me. Uh, they're a law-abiding society. They have a very, sorry, an exceptionally low crime rate, um, which is nice. And I have a friend who's uh, a, a young lady from Venezuela, and she has never felt more safe. And a lot of foreigners will tell you that. Um, if you're a lady, for example, uh, and from my experience, and other young ladies uh, have told me this, that they can walk around in Bosnia-Herzegovina at one o'clock in the morning from a location to their home and they do not feel threatened at all. So there's another plus point. Um, the cost of living at the moment is very low compared, to, I mean, for me, it's a, a, about 50%, maybe 55% of what it is in the UK. And I'm a pensioner. Uh, I could not live the, the standard of living that I have here uh, sorry, what I, what I experience here, I couldn't have that in the UK, right? Um, that's not to say that I live a luxury lifestyle here. I don't. I live a comfortable um, lifestyle. Uh, if I have to fly back to the UK, you know, I have to think about how much it's going to cost for my flights, which are expensive, and how to live uh, in, in, in UK where the cost for a week is like just over a, what I would spend in a month here. So the cost of living is, is better. Uh, the climate, there's eight microclimates in the country. Um, there's a lot of uh, healthy places to go to the mountains. We have the Cosra mountain range near us. Um, lots of spas in the country. My local town is called uh, Banya Laktashi. That's their real name. Banya means spa, Banya Luka, spa, Slatina, uh, which is about four or five kilometers away. So there's lots of healthy places um, to go and a culture to die for and i don't mean that in a nasty way um lots of things to learn lots of things to experience and yeah for the 22 years i've been here i could say that every day has been an adventure it's not far off saying that so from uh, this village in the north of bosnia herzegovina to the question that came from houston in texas um I hope that helped. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions about uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, as far as it is for me being here, I'll gladly answer them. I won't get into politics, though. So don't expect me to go off on one um, criticizing local politicians, etc. I'm not going to do that. And why am I not going to do that? Because I'm a guest here. I'm an immigrant here. Thank you very much indeed, Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, for letting me stay here. Even though I'm married to one of your citizens, thank you very much indeed. I appreciate it, and I'm not going to mess you about. Um, yeah, I haven't worked out um, what the next video will be about. As I say, if you've got a question, I'll do that. I'm thinking about maybe the dawn chorus, because I wake up in the morning, especially in spring and summer, uh, to the sound of myriad 
um, species of birds singing and making noises and welcoming um, a new day. And um, yeah, I've had an app on the phone uh, and I've been using it and I've got really into it. And I can tell you now that we have 34 species of birds here, um, of which six are different types of woodpecker. If you're a rural person, you'll most probably go, boring. But you have to understand, I was born in London. Uh, we moved to the suburbs when I was nine, and uh, there were trees and parks and open fields. And if I was to go back to those same suburbs now, it's still a concrete jungle. So that's it. I'm David. I live in Bosnia, Herzegovina. I'm aging gracefully here in the Western Balkans. Thank you very much uh, for watching. And uh, yeah, vidimus opet, which means I'll see you again.